You know, this has been over 150 years in the making. So with the official cutting, right, we acknowledge all the work, past, present, and future, and we are actualizing the vision of Chief Shingwak. We are here today to celebrate the grand opening and to celebrate the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. This history needs to be known by everybody. And I reached out to Diane and I said, wouldn't it be great if we could teach teachers how to teach this history in our schools? And I think this is a, a, a relationship that we'd like to strike with uh, Shingwak uh, Kinemogamik, is to take a look at that history and begin to teach our young people, both uh, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, about that true history that, uh, that we have as Nishinaabe people in this part of, uh, uh, of Turtle Island. I remember one time going up the bush with my dad, and I was up there to take pictures, and we kind of streamed off and I saw him tear off a piece of birch bark and another piece of wood and he slid it and he made a moose call. You know, so that you would only be able to capture that by, by being with those people who know how to do all of that. So that's really what SKG strives to become, is that centre of excellence in Anishinaabe education that is rooted in our culture and our values and our language. Doctrine of Discovery happened or occurred in the 1400s or 1500s, and the Papal Bull was part of that uh, document as well. And what it did back then, the Pope of the day and the Catholic Church gave permission to the people that were coming from Europe to take the land, and they, and they did. They took all of the land. And as far as I know, the doctrine is still in existence. And the conquering countries of the day, England and uh, Spain, and they went all over the world with this doctrine. And, and we, we, we had people here. There was millions of us here at that time and before. We were looking around. And then we turned to look and we where's mom? Where's dad? You know, in our language, we didn't know English. We started bawling like babies. Well, we were babies. And we started to cry, me and Rosella. Mama, papa, pisha, and you know, right away, that's the very first time, the very first that I we experienced being strapped by a leather belt about well, leather, about that long, thick. She grabbed our little hands and strapped us. We didn't know why, because we were crying or because we were speaking a language that she could not understand. Then we were taken in the, into another little room and we were stripped of our clothes and given a shower or a bath or whatever. And then they cut our hair. I used to have long hair. They cut it really short. Because when I came to this school at the age of four, and I watched my mom walk away, and it hurts this today. Pain is what I go through every day knowing that I will never see her in this world again. But I know I will see her in the spirit world. I'm one of the students attacked, attacked me with a rat tail comb, stabbed me in the back. I was taken to the hospital because they had to remove the comb because it had broke off in my back. She was also the person who assaulted me in the shower room told me that if I said anything, I would be sorry. I was very afraid of her. She, she was much older than me. I never used the showers after that. 
So it's very spiritual work that is happening here as well. And we have to use all of the resources that we have at hand. Truth and reconciliation, that's this important journey that's happening. But you know what? We're still at truth. In honesty, we're still at truth. So in, in regards to all of, that, all, all of that journey that we're undertaking, we're all undertaking the same journey because we want to do it for ourselves, for the generations that have passed into the spirit world that didn't have the opportunity to address their pain and their sorrows and what they missed about their life being an Aboriginal person, their families and communities. These are all everything that we have to think of when we sit around these tables. So many of our people lost the language and are doing the best that they can in order to learn the language again. I want to thank those 215 children that really brought to light the issues that we're dealing with today as a society. And it wasn't an accident that they uh, allowed themselves to be discovered just recently. They allowed themselves to be discovered so we could do what we're doing today and we could take seriously the work that needs to take place as we move forward, fulfilling the original hopes and expectations that we've all had. There's so many teachings that fit within the medicine wheel, including um, the four sacred medicines. So we decided to design the garden in the shape of a medicine wheel. Uh, it's very large, it's 60 feet in diameter. We knew we were growing a lot of medicines, so we wanted to make it uh, really big. So we uh, are growing the medicines, the sage, tobacco, cedar, and sweetgrass that are used typically used in smudging. They're the four sacred medicines. There's a lot of other medicines. Those are the four sacred medicines gifted to us by the Creator. We're going to be changing lives, and I think it's a very powerful thing. And teaching people things about our culture that maybe they don't necessarily know, which is a good thing. We often get visitors like our eagles, our eagle friends, a couple families of cranes are here. The geese, the killdeer, ducks, ducks the ancestors live here. that leave us little trinkets in the soil. I feel such a calling. To me, it's very personal that we truly acknowledge our ancestors and everything they have done, everything they've went through and everything they've done to get us, to allow us to be where we are today. And I feel uh, very strongly that we owe it to those next generations to come that uh, we be good future ancestors and do all that we can. Simply put, it's really to celebrate the resiliency of our survivors. I made it hard on myself. I took ownership to it, to all the mistakes that I went through. I took ownership to it. And I gave it back to the Creator. We talk about land-based learning, we talk about our culture, we talk about our language, and SKG is really that place. blessed to be working here to represent SKG and uh, full of gratitude.